Hello everyone watching at home, welcome to Adelaide Eternal. We're bringing you our November coverage from the Adelaide Eternal Legacy Challenge. I'm Sub McClinton, in the booth with me is Beckett Wolf. Well, good day, guy. So we have a matchup here with uh, Riley Beck on the left, and he's on Dredge. And on the right we have Nick Savitas, and he's on the um, Khan combo deck. Should we have a look at that first, because that's pretty... Yeah, insane. it's sweet. When I first looked at it, I thought it was like the Cloud Post deck, but it's for Mystic Forge, and that's what it's trying to do. There's a lot of these Mystic Forge effects now, uh, and this is just completely colourless. Uh, what, like, what's it? What's it trying to do? Is it trying to get Manifold Key, Voltaic Key, untap those um, Grim Monoliths, and just get a huge amount of mana? Um, what, like, what's the kill con here? Well, basically, it's kind of a port over from the Vintage deck. So Vintage obviously had these key cards banned, key, no, no pun intended there, uh, restricted, but the, um, uh, what's the name of the, Mystic Forge, that's it. So Mystic Forge is just a future site for colourless cards, and it just allows you to plough through your deck, but at the same time, the other key card is Khan Great Creator finding, you know, something that lets you win the game. And there's, you know, that Mycosynth Lattice combo that's from Modern. I assume that's uh, legal in that, that format. Um, and there's also Khan Scion of Urza. Uh, make, a, make a very big mm -hmm. Lotus Petal Fueled Artifact Construct guy. Exactly. And sometimes the uh, most deterministic win con for this deck is to generate a whole bunch of mana and then Khan the Great Creator goes and searches for Walking Ballista and then just kills your opponent in one go. What I really like about this deck is the Lion's Eye Diamonds, because they work so well with the Mystic Forge, and that's not something... It's obviously, like, such a powerful card in, in Legacy, and I think anyone who's ever seen that card is like, whoa, this card's got so much potential, but I can't think what it is off the top of my head yet, <laughs> you know? Um, and they're like, I know it's good in Storm, but, like, surely there's more potential. I mean, it's just so cool in this deck. You get Black Lotus when you've got a Mystic Forge out in some cases, so I really hope to see that in this matchup. Yeah, well, speaking of matchup, let's have a look at Riley's deck. So Riley is on Dredge. Uh, it's quite a traditional form of Dredge. Uh, there's obviously a variety of different variants, but the most recent card that has made a change to Dredge is Hogak. Gak Attack. Yeah, that's it. Were they always playing Street Wraiths in this for the Dredge? Uh, I believe they were because it allows you to protect your dredge card from surgical extraction from oh, the, in the board. Yeah. And so, yeah, oftentimes, for those who don't know how dredge works, you're going to see it, and there's going to be a graveyard all the way across the battlefield, I am for certain, in this matchup. Uh, but basically, replacing your draws with milling cards from the top of your deck and then returning that creature to your hand, and then likely discarding it through various other means. Uh, oftentimes, the best dredge openers uh, involve something like a um, breakthrough, where you just break through to draw four cards and then discard your whole hand because you didn't pay enough mana. Uh, but you're very, very happy to discard your entire hand. There are much worse dredge starts, and these involve uh, telling your opponent, go. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> just cutting the, the Golgari yeah, Grave Troll at the end. Now, uh, one key piece of tech here is to um, basically always put your opponent on the draw when you're playing against Dredge. If you know, if you've seen, you know, they, that they've been playing, that you've done some scouting and you've watched uh, and you know they're on Dredge, you're sitting against them and you roll a die and you go, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's put them on the play. Well, um, speaking of on the play, should we go down to the games? I can remember playing Riley on Dredge, and I asked him, I said, because I knew he was on Dredge, and, and I won the Dara, and I was like, should I, should I let you play? Yeah, and, and we had a chat play. about it, yeah. and, and, and he was like, well, no, nah, I think actually, you know, you should still be on the play yourself. So I was like, why are we even rolling the dice? <laughs> yeah, why, yeah, why are we rolling the dice? <laughs> um, Here we go, so there's eight, eight LEDs in this, uh, in this matchup, and yep, that's that start we're talking about, start. breakthrough. Uh, it also works with Firestorm, right? Yeah, basically. You just kind of want to discard your entire hand. And these are always the great starts for Dredge. Uh, when they don't have one of these two key cards, they can do the thing that we said before, which is just, you know, draw the card and then discard a card at the end of your turn to hand size. Uh, a Dredge is occurring. So um, he gets to discard... Faithless uh, Looting still legal in this format. <laughs> 
Yeah, here we go. There's the rest of the uh, the items discarded. Nark Amoeba uh, has a trigger it's been, because it's been milled. It gets to come to the battlefield. Now, there was some floating mana, and red was chosen, so he's able to use the red mana to face us looting. Uh, he's replacing one of the dread, uh, draws with a dredge Golgari Grave Troll for six, Ooh, and the other the draw with the well. dredge the Stinkweed Imp. It's looking good. He's got the bridge. He's got a Cabal in there. He's triggered a Nark Amoeba. He's yeah. got plenty of dredges in the bin. The most important thing here is having an outlet to get rid of those Nark Amoebas. And as you said, there is a Cabal Therapy. So uh, if you haven't seen this interaction before, it's basically just sacrificing a creature to look at your opponent's hand because you honestly don't care what they have for mo the most part. And the default setting is often uh, pre -game, uh, first game, you're just like, oh, name Force of Will. You, you don't even know what they're playing, so you just name Force of Will. Um, and it doesn't really matter for the most part. Well, often you can get the second one. Well, if, as you say, first of all, you just want to trigger to kill it uh, to get the, the two twos, and the information's relevant. Um, but a lot of the times there's two. Now he knows there's two Khans. Mm. So when he flips his next Cabal off a of Dredger, he's going to be able to uh, get rid of those. And if you've ever played against Dredge, you think, gosh, this is just so busted. How yeah. am I... Even, even if I it's had a bit of graveyard interaction... I'd feel so far behind here, um, but often the, the thing about the graveyard interaction against dredges, you know, often if you can eat that, like, one or two dredges at the start, then they're just completely stifled. For the most part, it's all about uh, the the key card on the key turn, you know, That's so, right. like, that very first turn, that very first dredger, whatever it might be, you know, and if you don't catch it, then you're done for. Yeah, that's but, right. Uh, there are other ways that you can punish it. Two more bridges in the beginning. Yeah, so now there's three bridges. It means, you know, when this Ikarid is going to die at the end of turn, he's going to be making three zombies, and uh, the game will largely be decided from that point. That's right, and it's a quick deck as well, Dredge. Um, I, I know in Vintage the, the percentage is, you know, something crazy, like 80-odd percent win game one um, mm. for Dredge. Is it the same in, in Legacy, or uh, is there I, a bit more, like, creatures so you can maybe hit your own creature and get rid of their bridge from below or something like that? I think it's not as polarised, but it is absolutely the same principle, where you just kind of go, yep, game one, I'm basically most of the time going to win, so how do I play around the hate in game two? And you notice that the dredge players, the savvy dredge players, uh, elect the right turn to, you know put a dredger into the graveyard they often don't you know discard try to discard everything and just um end up That's getting right. absolutely wrecked you know regarding the cabals i know that i've played against dredger and i've i've played out my like hand and got cabal and then i thought gosh i was gonna lose this anyway should i have just scooped yeah, now i've got the know, info feeling. and then i mean it's crazy like it feels so bad you feel like you know it's a bit cute but you know if you're gonna lose game one anyway like if you see that they have a very good turn one like that and you're like yeah i'm not going to win with this hand it could be correct guys to just scoop it up and say you don't get that information you don't know what to sideboard i get to just now play post board game you don't know what to cabal um and you don't know what to sideboard yeah I've, i have definitely had this consideration enter my mind before uh, i've never had the guts to do it but I have seen... No, I've never had the guts. Yeah, of, I'm, uh, I'm advocating for it, but I don't have the guts myself. I've seen, you know, <laughs> I've seen the dredge player, you know, in the room uh, on their various matchups at different points in the in the day. And then you sit across from them and you go, I know you're on dredge. And when you're in game two and three, you have that hope. You know, you're mulliganing down to find your surgical extraction or whatever other piece you have. In game one, you literally don't have that option. And you think to yourself, what is the perfect hand? And if you're on Delver and you kind of go, yep, I'm going to mull down to turn one Delver, turn two Delver, and a brainstorm, and, uh, you know, one land. And you're, you're, you're just like, this is, I'm fine with this, this collection of four cards or five cards if you've got a second land, uh, because you might be able to finish the game. But when you're on, say, Grix's Control and you're in that very position, it's probably correct to just say, let's go to game two, you win. And um, then when you when you do this kind of thing, note that you, although we talk about denying information from your for your opponent, you are also giving them information. So you're by conceding there, you're kind of saying, I'm on one of the decks that has zero percent chance to win game one, and okay, they can kind of go yeah, through and that's go, it, oh, that's maybe true. On, you know, as in there, you can establish they're probably on a fair deck. Yeah. Although yeah. Nick's not on a fair deck here, but he could he could have established he's not going to win. Uh, you know, after seeing if I if I 
if I saw that turn one and then I saw like Cabal and a and a Dredger and a, bi- a bridge from, bridge from below, I'd say, well, you know, I'm not going to win that. Yeah. Again, I don't criticize Nick at all. I don't think I would have scooped just out of you know pride and curiosity. Yeah. But uh, Nick Nick has the ability to win in this because he's also on a combo deck. He could just go absolutely degenerate and you know win. But on he knows three. his opener wasn't degenerate. Yeah. I guess he could have true. drawn. Yeah. John a Grim Monolith or, or, or an LED or something, I'm mm. not sure. But again, um, only assuming that you know what your opponent's on, I guess. Yeah, that's right. I mean, just, just quickly for sideboards, I think it's pretty obvious that Riley's not going to have heaps to bring in and um, Nick's going to have three Tormod Crips um, to bring in, which are an absolute must. Uh, do you think he's going to bring in his Incinerant Bridge? It's really, really tricky with uh, with this kind of Khan Forge deck in that you need to leave a certain number of cards in your wishboard. Uh, Khan essentially wishes for some of these cards, and sometimes you go, mm, what do I need in the main deck? And is it actually better being in the board because it's actually like you have four copies of that one card because it's in its Well, Nick's playing those Khan, Khan sign of Urza's in his sideboard. Not in the main. Yeah, I think it's a kind of transformative sideboard where your opponent goes, oh, you're on a combo deck, so they bring in a variety of combo hate cards, and you just go, turn one, soul land, turn two, soul land, Khan, Sion of Urza, um, and he just, just takes over the game. Because I would have thought it was pretty good game one anyway. Mm. Uh, it's possible. What do you think of also Ratchet Bob to get rid of tokens? Or do you think you're already, you've already lost a game where they're triggering a bridge from below? Well... There's not actually much interaction that the Khan Forge deck has in the first place, so it's possible that you're going to be in a situation where your opponent's going to have a bunch of zombies out, even if you're winning the game. So maybe it is a case that Ratchet Bomb is going to be useful mm-hmm. there. Uh, but I think I think that's the kind of card that needs to be in the sideboard, where if you have one Ratchet Bomb... Because you've got four copies you've got in four, the, Yeah, you've got main, four Ratchet yeah. Bombs that way, because in the main, you've got Khan. So uh, this is something you will see quite often: the dredge deck just mulling, just continuing to mull until they, you know, they find the right configuration of hand. Uh, there are times where the dredge, a dredge player, needs to make a judicious decision between a a hand that they keep on seven because they can draw a card and then discard at the end of that, you know, discard phase when they're at eight cards, but they have to weigh that up against um, going down to six, five, four, denying themselves that option, but having the opportunity of drawing breakthrough. I think, it, I mean, it's very... This isn't like the vintage where they have to hit Bizarre. They are playing lands. You know, they've got that Cephalo Coliseum. They've got the uh, City of Rouse and Gemstone. Oh, this is this is a turn. How exciting is this? This is doing Look how much mana that was. So... He was, yeah, he's doing the exact thing. So, City of Traders into three sources of mana, uh, using those sources to play a Mystic Forge and be absolutely ready to go off next turn. So, he wasn't able to continue going off because obviously maybe the top card of the deck is a land. But... That's right. But And the Mystic Forge lets you tap to exile the top. So, correct. Uh, assuming he can now untap with a bunch of mana, there's a very good chance he's going to be able to... Uh, uh absolutely go off so, so he's activating is, putrid in yeah this is discard. another reason why you uh can mull down because yeah you could get a breakthrough hand but you could also get a putrid imp hand and putrid imp allows you to systematically discard specific cards from your hand unlike say a breakthrough hand which means you're not going to have a hand so he can play his lion's eye diamond and so on and then actually just pass a turn and maybe at the end of turn discard a dredger and do the slow dredge one one at a time all right so nick's doing the thing he's got the khan um, and he's surely going to have enough mana to next turn play uh, the big boy, Marcus mm-hmm. and Platters. Yep, sounds like it. So uh, the card... Or get in for four. Yeah, nice. So the card itself... Uh... Oh, that's right, the Grim Monolith itself. The Grim Monolith was uh, tapped, so that's why he had to spend all of his mana, essentially, effectively, uh, using Khan. Oh, of course, okay. So he's not going to necessarily... Although there's a good chance he was to be able to find a Lotus Petal or something, but... Mm-hmm. Um, he won't necessarily be able to Marcus and Platters. Interesting concept there is that whilst Khan's on the stack, Riley had the choice to crack the LED to discard his hand, if he wanted to discard his whole hand. Uh, but he can also do that off Putrid Imp. So um, 
it's it's largely moot. Uh, but once Khan comes down, it uh, null rods the LEDs, so they would be useless from there on. Either way, uh, Nick elects to use Khan's plus ability to turn the LED into a creature. Power and toughness was zero oh, zero. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, I was wondering what he. So that's on. why. That's why it went to the graveyard. Yeah, and then I thought that was Mystic Forge attacking. Ah, right, right. When it tapped, but um, no, it, was it was just, just exiling, exiling that city of traders on the top. Mm-hmm. And interesting, he didn't want he didn't play a land that turn, and he didn't want city of traders. I guess that makes sense because if you're not going to use the two mana straight away, it doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wonder if he's got some more mana in his hand, or if he's got some gas. Yeah, well, I assume he wants he wants mana. You know, he wants like LED there. Here's a breakthrough from before, permitting uh, Riley to not only discard his hand, but get to dredge with a stinkweed imp as well. There's a there. flashback um, zombify in there as well. What's that one called? You know, flashback zombify. Sacrifice three dread creatures. Return? Dread return. That's the one. Mm. That's from the sideboard, I believe. Nice. Um. Yeah, so Putrium gets in there for two. <laughs> Tormod's Crypt, that's a good one. I was about to say, I thought Putrium's a 1-1. One, one. Oh, wait a second. It has an ability. Yes. When you when you discard cards, it does pump itself up. Yep. Almost always irrelevant, right? But it turns out that it was actually relevant here, right? <laughs> You're usually just using it as a discard outlet. So here's the Tormod's Crypt, as you said. It's got to be careful, because I, mean, I think he's got this game because of the Tormod's Crypt. But um, you, cards aren't safe in your hand, because there's Cabal Therapy in the bin there. So mm-hmm. if he gets the Microsynthitis and then can't play it, then um, you know it's it, that's that's that game plan over. Um, liquid metal coating ought to do it though. So liquid metal coating turning uh, the mana confluence into an artifact. No, not mana. Is it mana confluence? No, it's mana. Yeah, it's mana confluence. Yeah, sorry, it's not Mystic Confluence. That's the uh, <laughs> that's the counter spell. <laughs> Mana Confluence into an artifact, so it's obviously null rotted now. But we have a ballista ready to kill a putrid imp. Yeah, yeah. I I think Nick's got it. Although there was a there was a chance there for Riley to get back. You know, discard a card, kill the Khan, mm. um, and then you know there's there's no more Khan, so Liquid Metal doesn't do anything. For sure. Liquid Metal. Um, but that's surely a game, because that's such a solid Tormund script. So Riley here has to draw, you know, the Golgari Grave Troll or something. And even if he does, he's set back by so that's many right. turns. He's going to have to dredge the following draw phase. And, so, and can I just say, with, with the with the Tormund script, yes, it got a big chunk of cards out there, but it's not so much about getting the big chunk of cards. It's about just ruining it for one turn. Like, if it was the same Tormund script, but he only hit four cards in the graveyard... Mm. Uh, it doesn't really matter if Riley's... Because Riley's often going to be in the same position where he's not able to get the engine going. And that's what you want to switch off when you're playing against Dredge. So I, I would worry less about trying to wait till you get, like, half the deck. Like, you're not going to mill them. So it doesn't really matter, like, the percentage of cards. Um, it's about stranding them for, for one or two turns um, mm, yep. w- without the Dredge engine going off. Uh, in this case, he's done both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so the Ballista just kills the Putrid Imp. I mean, there's an argument to just keeping the Ballista around so you don't kill the Putrid Imp there because a card has already been played, so it can't get plus one, plus one. And then going to the following turn, he uh, is able to pump the Ballista up if there was, say, a land drawn, and then he gets to keep the Ballista around. Because once the Ballista dies, there isn't actually the Ballista win line anymore because there's only one in the deck. I agree with that, although... I will say Nick's probably thinking he's going to win with Khan and Putrid Imp chipping away at Khan for one, maybe two every turn. It's going to be harder for him to neg the Khan, get the Mycosynthitis, which I think is what his mindset is. And it probably is his best win condition uh, at the moment. Although Dredge can win through yeah, through a, through a Mycosynthitis, right? Yep. You can still trigger... You can still do how, the things, right? Still do the things. Well... Here was a Faithless Looting off the top of the deck, which was able to be cast with the Mana Confluence. Uh, the previous turn, Nick used Liquid Metal Coating to turn the uh, Threshold Land into an artifact and then kill it because it becomes a zero zero with Khan, the great creator. So he was working on just systematically destroying those lands. Uh, turns out that the uh, card that was drawn was a red card, which could be played off Mana Confluence. Sometimes these things just kind of bite you. Uh, so now there are actually 
um, there is a dredger in the graveyard ready to go for next turn. So that's a manifold key, which is essentially a voltaic key. But with worse art. Uh, with worse art, although slightly better... Ever so, I can't remember what it is. It makes yeah, something def- unblockable or something? Yeah, it's, it's definitely not strictly better by definition, but for all intents and purposes, for the most part, it's strictly better. Uh, you know, there are times where you want to target your own. Well, he's playing card a two-two split. I assume for exactly powerful. this matchup for Cabal. Yeah. Yep. So that it can't. So Ooh. if you've got two in the your hand, you can't get named and blown out. That's it. Paradox That's Engine. That's, yeah, this is just. I'm pretty sure this is the writing on the wall because with Paradox Engine, every time a spell gets cast, he's untapping all the mana sources, allowing him to cast more spells. Uh, when he did untaps this get all banned the in EDH. Yeah, it did. When he untaps all the things, remember he can untap the Mystic Forge, which le- allows him to exile lands off the top of his deck. So the only way he doesn't automatically win here is where there's a sequence of a number of lands back to back on the top of his deck, uh, and. You know, that can be an awkward situation, but he can also then use Voltaic Key to untap the mm. um, the forge. So in reality, he needs to see three or more lands in a row for him to actually be stopped. Otherwise, he's going off here. It's literally, by definition, going off. That's right. Well, that's, well, that was my EDH comment. It's, it sort of feels like an EDH yeah, sort of play, does, like, you, where you just oh, snowball, two. snowball, snowball. Yeah, there are two of them. Would you say this is getting out of hand? <laughs> roger, roger. <laughs> so let's see. Let's see how he actually decides to finish the game. Because remember, as we said before, the walking ballista was the only kind of deterministic kill on the same turn, shoot your opponent and Yeah, and what does dead. he do? Just get Khan? Like the other um, Khan? Or yeah. does he up to his Khan on his own Mystic Forge and start swinging? I'm pretty sure he... Uh, basically it's a just, very locky sort of game isn't yeah it? he it's can a bit string, more locky than i thought he can string cards together and then he can get himself a uh khan sign of urza out of the uh the um sideboard and then use that to make one token that is uh you know 30 30 and then win the following turn but that's still not deterministic because if riley top decks actually yeah yeah so riley uh, he top decks his Stinkweed Imp because he's going to dredge it. He mills a Nark Amoeba, and the Nark Amoeba comes into play. He also mills uh, th- three bridges. Oh, I think. I and think... then he blocks with the Nark Amoeba, and well, then he makes more. So, so like, there's I a way to get I think one of the few decks that could come back from here, yeah. which puts a bit of pressure on Nick. I think nine, you know, ninety nine percent of decks would just scoop here. Or well, I don't even know if there's a hundred decks. If there's no Nark but... Amoeba here. Yeah, so there's no Nark Amoeba here. But if the if there was one one convoluted thing Nick can actually do is he can find Tormod's crypts from his great uh, from his sideboard because I assume he leaves one in there to search with Khan, mm. um, and then hit himself and then he's able to get the because um, Khan lets you get cards from exile mm-hmm. so he can get the ballista back from exile right um, you know I don't know how relevant it's pretty convoluted but I'm just saying that there's ways there's a way to get that ballista back to, to, to on the get, same yeah term. to get yeah, things yeah, back I mean the same it. thing could could be said for uh, Paradox Engine if you run out of wing conditions or, or something like that you mm. know there's, there is ways to, to get it back yep yep makes sense so uh, for those at home we are largely just uh, spitballing all the various different ways that Nick could just win to de- demonstrate the win. But it's entirely academic. He's he's essentially won the game, but for a 0.001 percenter with a particular sequence of dredge cards um, being dredged by one Stinkweed Imp for Riley. Uh, so it's the fun part, right? <laughs> we think yeah, about how, I mean, how are they going to win? <laughs> you know, if your opponent doesn't want to concede, I mean, and Riley did concede there, but if your opponent doesn't want to concede, oh, I, don't, I don't mind, I'm happy to... I'm happy to keep, you know, reveling in in my in my win and keep going off. Who doesn't yeah. like doing that? Why not? So post board now, uh, from a dredge perspective, you've just seen specific cards, and in this case, it's specifically Tormod's Crypt. He hasn't seen uh, Graft Digger's Cage, but Graft Digger's Cage doesn't actually do that much work against. Um, against dredge so graft digger's cage denies you from searching a deck for creatures uh, and also denies you from 
flashing back cards from the graveyard and putting creature cards from the graveyard into play. So it specifically turns off Dread Return. It specifically turns off the flashback from Faithless Looting. But overall, it doesn't well, actually it doesn't hit do the bridge a... from below. So exactly. Which are the big ones. So like, uh, he, it's not like he Riley was specifically worried about Grafdigger's Cage. The main thing is that he's seen the specific types of hate. And now he can kind of plan around those specific uh, hate cards. So this involves, now that he's got, uh, he knows he's against Tormod's Crypt, he's going to have to dredge slower, you know, where you end up retaining certain numbers of cards and not going in all in into this one breakthrough or this one, um, you know, putrid imp discard your entire hand. And maybe only leaving one dredge, dredger in the graveyard at any one point in time. Uh, sometimes holding a Street Wraith in hand, being able to be ready to discard a card at the end of their turn after they've crypted allowing you to set up for that dredge on the following turn so it's a very it's a very different game but knowing what you're playing against knowing what hate you're playing against is one of the critical aspects what one of the real reasons i would never want to play dredge is just because it, it, i wouldn't know what to side out <laughs> i feel like i'd be so scared of like sideboarding incorrectly definitely you if you're rather you want to bring in those nature's claims you probably don't want Elish Born Grand Cenobite. Um, <laughs> you might want an Ashen Rider, um, but like, you, yeah, what you know, do you take what, out? What's got? Usually, yeah, the, you don't want to switch things off. Yeah, the um, th- I know this is from a vintage perspective, so take this with a grain of salt. Uh, for vintage dredge, you often trim a thug. Uh, thugs tend to be like your your easiest card to cut in certain matchups uh, when you don't know what to cut. But in, in certain matchups, there are cards that you just always cut. Um, but it looks like we're seeing their hands now. So it's an LED hand from Nick. LED hands, I can assume, are not as powerful as they would be in a Storm because placing something on the stack on turn one is not something as easy to do in the Khan deck as it is in... Oh, actually, no, you could go like City of Traitors, Grim Monolith, Lotus Petal... Khan, Khan Great Creator, oh, and then have I th- the LED. I, th- I think LED is very good once you've resolved either Khan yeah. or Mystic Forge. But in your opening hand, it's not as busted as say it is in Storm, which could N- no, it's almost like storm. it's almost like a turn four play. Yeah, yeah, well, not turn four, but yeah, like a four mana play in a sense because you're only doing it once you've got one of those four mana spells out. Mm. Um, so which they can do on turn two, I guess, quite consistently, right, with the Soul Lands and the Grim Monoliths. So maybe yeah, it's more of a Hey, I'm going to go off on turn two type of uh, play rather than a storm. Some you know those storm hands where you like three LEDs, infernal tutor, uh, land, lotus petal or something. <laughs> My, yeah, mind you, I think also it it, it it might not just be busted thing. It might be like once he's got Mystic Forge out, he's going to have to get through a lot of chaff off his deck. Like there might just be a Thrain Dynamo, which like he doesn't really need, but mm. he like needs to cast it off the top of his deck so that he can find the next thing. So he wants those LEDs to be able to, like, get this raw mana just to chew through the deck a, a bit more with, True. with Mystic Forge. So here we have Riley on the play, and he's got a LED an LED hand well, with a Faithless Looting. Okay, so... Uh, so this holding is actually, priority, cracking LED, discarding mm, card. That's nice. Yeah, whilst it, whilst it doesn't look as powerful as Breakthrough, it's going to do basically the same thing, where... Not exactly, but basically the same thing with um, the amount of dredges and draws he's being able to replace here. Yeah, because you you're gonna draw obviously after you've discarded. Oh, there's the bridge. The last card being flipped being the bridge. You know, when, until that bridge went into the graveyard, I was like, oh, this isn't that bad. And the moment the bridge went into the graveyard, well, I'm it like, was oh. it was bridge and cabal, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, now it. he just needs a narcomiba. There's an Icarid. Yeah. And, and so, a dread return. Yeah. Yep. I think he just wants a narcomiba, and uh, he's looking pretty solid. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Narcomiba would start him off, but he can use the Icarids. It just yeah, he's got two two and Icarids, two... no three Icarids. Is this is turn, turn this one. Is turn one. Three oh. Icarids, two bridges. So next turn is absolutely bonkers. Well, and the turn after oh, that. Oh, oh, we said next huge. turn. I mean, that's you got to you got to see that's going to happen. That's and, uh, he's he's done. And you know, I was gonna yeah. I was gonna say, um, Nick. When when I said earlier, maybe he keeps one in the board. I don't know if you do. I think I maybe think it's need... too important to have it on yeah. turn one. You, you just need to jam too it. Too greedy to wait until yep. you hit that. Absolutely. That can So I reckon maybe he probably is playing all three. Um, yeah. So now... Brutal. Can you see the difference between the variants there? If 
Nakamiba was one of those Icarids when it was flipped. It's Cabal, a different game. Yeah, you go You're just Cabal like Cabal Therapy then... named Tormod's Crypt, Every make time. three zombies, and then there's no Tormod's Crypt in the following turn. He has three, uh, two Icarids ready to come back. That's right. Uh, it's it's that sometimes these these games can come down to. Do I flip a Nakamiba or not? Oh, that's right. I mean, there's always choice in the dredge deck. Like, I noticed he's not playing Bryce the Amalgam. I don't know a lot of dredge do. He's not playing Bloodgast. Uh, but, uh, you know, the Nakamiba is just that solid everyone's playing for for that exact reason. Mm-hmm. It's yep. the, the, Leads guts. the most degenerate stuff. That's right. So, uh, this was a Mystic Forge turn, uh, which sets up Nick extremely well to win this game. Yeah, well, I sort of zoned out after that, definitely. but yeah. it, it's not over. You're right. Uh, but Nick didn't just have the Tormod's Crypt, he also had a relevant, like, decent hand. Yeah. It's not like he thought, oh, not a good hand, but at least it's got Tormod's Crypt. It's, I mean, it's, it had everything he wanted, right? And they were both on a multi six, and they both had good hands. It just uh, happened to be that the dredge didn't quite line up as, uh, uh, you know, maximum value. I guess it turned out to be minimum value, because uh, <laughs> discard your hand to Tormod's So what Crypt. does Riley need here? Just, uh, like, a... <laughs> Putrid Imp, and then uh, he needs to he get needs another like dredger. A breakthrough or something, right? But then, but he's with, not and a dredger in hand. Yeah. Some right. way to discard. Hmm. Can you name yourself off a cabal? Yes, you can. So it could. So there's a few ways. It could be cabal. It could be firestorm. You know, any way to discard. It could be an LED. Any way to discard and a dredger to get. It going. might be a liquid metal coating turn though. A liquid metal lock where Nick. Uh, uses Khan, Great Creator, to find liquid metal coating, then starts to coat Riley's lands like last turn, last game, and just destroy them and just deny any possible faceless looting, cabal therapy, you know, breakthrough. He just won't be able to cast anything. Absolutely. But he's instead opted for the key, and that's probably because he realises he can keep going off, and he might even be able to, you know, play something else, play another Khan or something like that. Yeah, talk uh, about talk about mana. Do it again. They look at that, you know, he, exactly what you said with the keys, but the keys are now pumping out mana off that Grim Monolith, and he's still got mana floating and a Thrun Dynamo, but no, he must have hit another land, I, I reckon. I, I don't mind it from Nick at all, because even if Riley did assemble something like what we were talking about, it's going to be another turn before anything can swing at Khan, and now he's really, really set up for mm-hmm. this turn, you know, and he can always do that liquid metal play. He can give, do the Micros and Lattice play, Oh, Paradox Engine, there you yeah. go. You yeah, that's a show of power where he just doesn't find, you know, anything to interact with his opponent. He just finds the thing that's going to let me just go off. This is a this is the sign, right? So Paradox Engine is going to let him generate an exorbitant amount of mana every spell cycle. That's right, and therefore cards of, of Mystic Forge as well. Yeah, and so every time he plays a spell, he's going to be able to untap that Mystic Forge three times. So there's necessary. every chance he's going to be so, able to find... Yeah, uh, get another card and find the coding or find the lattice anyway. Yeah, like, this turn as well. Except exactly. you just up one paradox engine. That's it. Uh, so this Mystic Forge is going to deny any uh, possibility he's going to get stuck because of those um, those keys. Looking at you know th- the top exiling the top three cards up to the three cards if he ends up lining up a bunch of. It really lands is a combo go. deck, isn't it? It's not. Oh yeah. It's certainly not like the cloud it's not value. Deck. In the... It's not, it's not well, random playing value, it's combo. Series, yeah. yeah. And I think you can see that in the Crystal Veins, you know? Mm. So well well played there by uh, by Nick. Bit of a shame there on such a amazing turn from Riley. Um, yeah, it all to, came down to the Nakamiba flip. If, yeah. If but, it's not there, it just didn't but, let him um, set up. Nick, I think, played really confidently um, and obviously knows his deck and, and knows the capabilities of it, so... Sweet. Well done to him. Thanks for uh, joining us for round one of the Adelaide Eternal Legacy Challenge. We'll see you in round two. See you then.